and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. In this episode, I'll be discussing the 1947 Disney classic, Fun and Fancy Free. Uh, their ninth such classic, and indeed their fourth anthology style film, being comprised of two distinct separate animated features connected loosely by way of narration by none other than Jimmy Cricket, of course, um, as voiced by Cliff Edwards who we did indeed see in the 1940 animated feature, Pinocchio. So, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, like the previous three movies um, in the Disney Classics range that preceded this one, it is not a full-length feature per se. Um, again, it is a package of a number of tales and stories that really don't have any kind of common thread. Um, again, apart from Jimmy Cricket, you know, and even then, he's only really there to kind of pin together the elements. Although, I must admit, I did enjoy the short sequences he was actually in. We really should have actually got more from him. And indeed, a better connected framework, which would have really helped the pace of this film. And, and really helped it become something a bit more special, I think. And indeed, overall, <clears throat> it is actually one of the better anthology-style Disneys that I have actually seen. I still have a couple left to review, but this one, it, it, it was very pleasant uh, for the most part. And in the second half contained a very large helping of Mickey, Donald and Goofy, which really made an excellent finale. The movie was tipped to be a musical, uh, that's the way it was advertised. But it is more a series of cartoons, really, and links with songs kind of sung over the animation. There are a couple that are actually sung by the characters, but ultimately, some of the style is really akin to their 1940 feature, Fantasia. Whilst some is is very much akin to the cartoons, really, that they've got, the latter does ultimately prevail, which does kind of reduce the effect of this feeling like an actual feature. For the most part, um, the feature has a fairly upbeat tempo and a real kind of positive vibe. As the title suggests, the emphasis is on being fun and fancy free. There are a few moments where the film comes a bit of a product of its time um, and so doesn't quite feel quite as positive perhaps as it should do today, nor does it always send the right messages. Um, but it tries and it is filled with a number of kind of affectionate moments that, that kind of more than compensate to be fair. What I did find interesting um, upon researching for this review was that this was actually the last time Walt Disney himself would actually voice Mickey Mouse, uh, well, regularly, if you like, due to his other, other commitments. I do believe it was his last in a feature, um, with Jimmy MacDonald taking over the role thereafter. And so the movie is kind of iconic uh, for that reason alone, to be fair. Indeed, as well, uh, both story elements in the film are based on other movies that were actually already in production for quite some time. But due to a number of different factors, largely due to the impact that the Second World War had on the studio and its then ability to release films into foreign markets, both projects were actually shelved. But then were ultimately formed basically to, to be part of this production. In fact, the film is, if you like, a hodgepodge of forgotten dreams and earlier ideas for movies and really incorporates elements that were even cut from, from previous productions, including, as it turns out, Pinocchio, uh, with a song as sung by Jiminy Cricket at the start of the movie, I'm a happy-go-lucky fellow, having actually been written for and originally intended for that film, but cut prior to its release. So in this sense, the movie is quite ingenious uh, when you really do think about it. At a time when the funds were really tight, Walt Disney managed to find what had really been sent to the cutting room floor and, and then incorporated it into a number of new features, including this one. It may not have always worked seamlessly, but it kept them afloat. So, for the first story, um, this is based on the tale... The Little Bear Bongo by Sinclair Lewis and is introduced by Jimmy himself and then kind of narrated throughout by Diane, uh, Dinah Shaw, not Diana, Dinah Shaw. 
and tells the story of Bongo, a mistreated circus bear who is hearing the call of the wild and dreams of life being free. One day he does escape and finds himself in the middle of a remote woodland, which at first seems magical, alluring and idyllic. But soon the roughness of life outside of the circus does start to take its toll and it's clear that poor old Bongo knows nothing of being a real bear. He does, however, ultimately find love um, in a sequence Hallmark would have been proud of and then using his extraordinary showmanship and circus acrobatics in order to beat another potential and very fearsome suitor to his love, Lulabelle. For me, this story, it was the weakest out of the two presented, to be fair. It, it does linger far too long, and the musical numbers aren't quite as catchy or, you know, enthralling as they could have been, and it didn't really hold a theme all that too well. But that's not to say that there aren't a few amusing moments along the way, but ultimately it was just really a so-so part of the movie. There are a few problems with this segment I'm going to uh, highlight uh, which have not dated all too well and send really completely the wrong message in today's world. I mean, forget even if we forget about the stereotypical views of love um, and man and wife and all the rest of it that's going on in this film, I didn't really like the insinuation that Bongo would have actually been better off in the circus at times, which did kind of start to happen as he became disenchanted with the roughness of the wild. This really did send the wrong message um, about being held in, in captivity. But the weirdest one, even for the time this film was released, um, was apparently, um, bears say they love each other with a slap. Yep, you heard that right. With a whole song and dance number devoted to that philosophy. This definitely sends the wrong message about violence in relationships, period. Needless to say that it, it did set off our son Oliver slapping himself. Uh, so that was something I had to correct and undo. Uh, so thank you, Disney, for that. We uh, then lead into the next story, uh, again by Jimmy Cricket, um, which is this time around actually narrated by Edgar Bergen in a blend of live action animation and puppetry featuring his well-known puppets of the time Charlie McCarthy and Mortimer Sned and also a young girl as played by Luana Patton uh, yeah Patton who are basically having an evening of storytelling apparently Edgar Bergen uh, was actually quite the act I don't, didn't know of him before this film to be fair but back in the day apparently he was renowned for his ventriloquist abilities uh, and so he along with Dinah Shaw uh, who narrated the first story, of course, were kind of used to draw the public in to actually see this film. Being that the, the two stories that they had, they, they thought that they, they were weak, you know, um, in, in certain terms of style and, and substance. I must admit that the use of the puppets was actually quite unique and indeed quite comical, um, offering a different slant on the proceedings I hadn't kind of seen in a Disney production up until this point. And... You know, it was a real interesting way to not only lead into the second story, but also to kind of work with it as a piece of fiction, with the characters in the live action elements relaying their experiences of the story as it was actually being told. So the second story, it, it's entitled Mickey and the Beanstalk, taking place in a fictional land called Happy Valley, with this being basically a variant on the classic Jack and the Beanstalk children's tale. Featuring none other than Disney's staples, Mickey Mouse, as voiced by Walt Disney himself, as we know. Uh, Donald Duck, as voiced by Clarence Nash. And good old Goofy, as voiced by Pinto Colvig. Destitute and starving, Mickey trades in their only cow for some magic beans. As of course anybody would. Uh, but after Donald um, throws them away in a fit the next morning... They are surprised to find they have grown into a gigantic beanstalk. Excited by the prospect of adventure, the three friends climb this beanstalk and find a strange new world at the top, inhabited by giant insects, giant plant life and Willy the Giant, as voiced by Billy Gilbert, whose 
easily angered, very greedy, but lovable nonetheless. In this unfamiliar and exotic place, they find a magical golden harp, previously belonging to the residents of Happy Valley and stolen by the giant. The three friends then hatch a plan to escape the clutches of the giant and return to Happy Land triumphantly with the harp in hand. But that is before the giant gives chase. So, compared to the first story, this is, is a vastly more entertaining segment. It's another nice cartoon. Nothing too amazing, to be fair, but it is nice to see the gang together, you know? Especially Donald, who's, who's on his usual top form. This segment got more than a few giggles from me, I must admit. The musical arrangements are a lot more jovial, and the piece does kind of move at a relatively more brisk pace, with a bit more of a, an adventurous quality, you know? So... Overall, uh, this was quite a charming little feature, all told, uh, with a real kind of affectionate take on its two main set pieces. I wouldn't say that the storytelling or the animation was really groundbreaking or anything to write home about, but it was still beautiful uh, enough. But, um, but at the end of the day, the two features really are just a couple of cartoons when all said and done, you know? So... That brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching and many thanks for putting up with me through this episode as well. I think I'm coming down with cold, so my nose is kind of filling up. So I, I can't swallow. And it's, yeah, it's getting a bit much. Um, but thank you for bearing with me anyway. Uh, I still wanted to put one out this week. Uh, but yes, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions and other movie related content. Um, but yes, most of all, thank you for joining us and uh, hope to see you again. Goodbye.